Hello, this is my, what, take three now? Starting these videos is always so awkward. But anyways, basically, here's my little loom screen. This is me in the corner. I might disappear as I start clicking through this stuff. But uh, basically, what I'm just doing is an old world walkthrough of the historic Riverside, California downtown area, the 395. And we're going to be looking into some stuff that I think maybe seems a little sketchy, maybe just a little weird maybe just beautiful architecture. Love the old ancient stuff. Uh, I will be showing you a building that I actually do comedy in. Uh, and uh, I noticed it was old, but like upon doing this walk around uh, downtown with my girlfriend and specifically trying to seek out old world stuff, I just noticed like, I was like, wow, this building is literally built into ruins. Like it's so amazing to be like still participating in something here. And you know, how long, who's to say that, uh, you know, comedy hasn't been going on in this building on and off for hundreds, maybe thousands of years. And there's a gay bar next door. Who, who's to say that haven't been drag brunches for centuries? Love it. So, uh, anyways, yeah, I love the old world stuff, love the Tartaria stuff, uh, as I guess the people are saying, you know, Tartaria was just essentially a region of the old world, and so, you know, I won't call this video a Tartaria video, we're just looking in to Riverside, California. Okay, so uh, we're not going to be drawing any conclusions. I, um, you know, I'm a very, like, I'm a smart, sensible person, but I don't have any expertise where he'd be like, oh, look at this rock. That's not the rock that's supposed to be there. So we're just having fun with it. All right, let's start. Uh, okay, so I've got some pictures. I was going to do a slideshow, but uh, I have the worst phone on the planet, and it's just like... <laughs> this was just the easiest way for me to do this without going crazy. So here we go. Historic California uh, US 395 route. And I guess that was mostly what I was on, but I, you know, I uh, went around and did my own route, but that is where most of this takes place. Oh, yeah. So in this picture, we uh, see uh, the what do you call it? The rain cross tower with these arches right here, beautiful arches. And in another picture uh, I show over here, uh, you can see that these brick facings, these new brick facings have been just painted and plastered on there on top of what used to be the old brick here. And this was just one spot where I guess the old facing fell off or they forgot to put it. So that is Rain Cross Tower. I tried to look up uh, some history on it. I couldn't see much. All that was really coming up was that the Rain Cross symbol, which you'll see a lot around here, I'll pull it up in a second, is a historic Riverside thing that's supposed to be um, associated with the Spaniards and the missions. But I honestly think, and I don't have any proof of it quite yet, but just in, you know, just in the back of my head, I kind of think that uh, this symbol was probably there for a lot longer than the Spanish because uh, the cross itself is not a Christian symbol and the cross is very, very ancient. So uh, stuff that's like derivative of it could also be very ancient, if not more ancient. So this right here, this white building in the background, this is the Riverside Food Lab now. I don't know what the actual building itself is called, but, um, you know, it's giving, you know, Spanish mission architecture. Very nice. Uh, I think you are allowed to go up here. I haven't been yet. But, yeah, that is still a functioning building. I go eat food in it. Also awesome to see that it is, um, you know, still t taking part in ancient culture and history. That was me trying to do a video, but I messed up. Okay, right, so here's the larger picture. We see the outside of Rain Cross Tower, beautiful arches, the old building. Yeah, not sure how old it is, but it says, if we go into our little history, um, oh yeah, here, right here, that is the Rain Cross symbol right there where it says City of Riverside. You'll see that a lot, and the Spanish have claimed that. 
So just a little history of Riverside. So Riverside was founded in 1870 by John North and a group of Easterners who wished to establish a colony dedicated to furthering education and culture. Riverside was built on land that was once a, once a Spanish rancho. Investors from England and Canada transplanted traditions and activities adopted by prosperous citizens. The first golf course and polo field in Southern California were built in Riverside. And that's interesting because just in this community of like uncovering things and getting to the bottom and the truth of stuff, we know that golf courses are often put places to, uh, you know, just kind of uh, cover up things because if, if you know, this is a golf course and you're here to play golf and you're supposed to respect the game and, you know, generally just be a normal customer person then obviously you wouldn't start digging at the golf, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> the golf course. I was going to call it a golf park. I clearly don't play golf. Uh, you won't dig up the golf park. You know, you'll, you're going to leave it to be. And so uh, this is often a very easy uh, way to make people not dig places allegedly. And they threw up a polo field too. So knowing that one of the first golf courses in Southern California was built in Riverside. And if we take our little, uh, you know, conspiracy uh, knowledge, we can assume that, you know, there is possibly some very um, ancient or important things to get covered up fairly quickly. So the first orange trees. So Riverside, if you don't know, is in California and Southern California is deep inland. So they call it now, often, Riverside as well as a few other places lumped together uh, are called Inland Empire, right? But the, it used to be called the Orange Empire. So it started out as the Orange Empire and then was later changed to the Inland Empire. So the first orange trees were planted here in 1871, but the citrus industry in Riverside began two years later when Eliza Tibets received two Brazilian naval orange trees sent to her by a friend at the Department of Agriculture in Washington. The trees thrived in the Southern California climate and the naval orange industry grew rapidly. Yeah, real rapidly. Within a few years, the successful cultivation of the newly discovered naval orange led to a California gold rush of a different kind. The establishment of the citrus industry, which is commemorated in the landscapes and exhibits of the California Citrus State Historic Park and the restored packing houses in the downtown's marketplace district. By 1882, by 18. 1882. Where, when do we start? The first orange trees were planted here in 1871. By 1882, there were more than half a million citrus trees. 1871, the first orange trees ever, ever were planted in Riverside, California. By 1882, there were more than half a million citrus trees in California. That just sounds f fucking crazy to me. That just sounds, that's, that's wild to me. Like that, but, and also because the first, not only from 1871 to 1882, right, did half a million citrus trees just pop up in the Orange Empire, but Riverside itself was established in 1870. So in one year, you all brought the fruit that established an entire empire by 1882. That sounds wild to me, especially given that like, you're really just saying that the people that lived on these lands were absolutely stupid and incapable of anything. If it took the Spanish to go to Brazil to get some orange trees. You mean the people that were here couldn't go to Brazil? In fact, I think the people that were here might, you know, be more cl closely acquainted with the Brazilians. It might be a little easier for them. Uh, 
that's just me hypothesizing that I think these orange trees were here already. Uh, anyways, let's read a little bit more and then head back to the pictures. All right. So almost half of which were in Riverside. The development of refrigerated railroad cars and innovative irrigation systems established Riverside as the wealthiest city per capita by 1895. So we found the city in 1870. By 1895, this is one of the fucking wealthiest places just overflowing with oranges. Those oranges, there was no learning curve in planting these oranges. These people immediately knew how to take care of these plants, where to plant them, and how much water they needed, clearly. Like, there was absolutely no learning curve. Everybody here was a farmer and a gardener, <laughs> deeply involved in horticulture. Okay, so let's hop on over back to our pictures. That's just a little history on our orange empire here. And let's see. Hey, right, so this, um, when I was showing you the building, the Spanish looking building in the background, here is like the hallway kind of of that building or you wouldn't call that a hallway. But uh, yeah, these are the archways like leading down and around. They've got like uh, shows advertised here. You know, we're very much still using these buildings. But you could be like, oh, this is like, um, you know, it's got very old style, but it looks so new. How does it just look so new and pretty? Well, if you crack back <laughs> that plaster, they're covering the ruins of this place again, like, and it looks like they didn't even, you know, like these, this brick literally looks like a hundred or a thousand years ago, somebody broke this and they literally just plastered over it. They didn't even um, care to, you know, uh, fix up the structure. Cause I guess it, um, while still very ancient and old looking, it is um, still holding up fine, you know, enough to house these people, or not house these people, but uh, this is currently the food lab in a theater. Uh, so yeah, another picture you can see from further away how they plastered over that old, old brick. But it also shows you that, you know, we, um, uh, at least this is just me assuming from my own knowledge and just like a, probably a handful of people like me, but I, and maybe a couple of people like me, you know, we often see these Spanish mission buildings that they are white plaster, which, um, you know, whatever, you don't think anything of it, but kind of like doing my research now, it kind of seems like they did all this white plastering to not only, um, you know, make, uh, the buildings look nicer again because they are ruins, but um, to kind of take away from this uniform style of brick making, because it really does kind of make you think once you just see so much brick, you know, you're, you start kind of being like, oh, wait, why does downtown California look like Chicago? You know, and I think that starts making people ask questions, whereas if you you know, throw some plaster on that brick. Now it's just like, oh, yes, Spanish architecture, beautiful, the mission. <laughs> oh, yeah, where were they? Oh, yeah, and so then we've got just uh, more showing you the kind of walk up to the food lab portion of this building, what is now the food lab anyway. And, you know, beautiful arches, uh, Truly an amazing building to be eating, you know, chicken tenders and fries in. <laughs> uh, really makes you feel like you should be doing something uh, more, I don't know, a little more lavish. But I mean, old buildings too were used just for normal stuff. Not everything has to be, uh, you know, uh, cathedral. So here we have the kitchen lounge. Uh, this is actually a place I do comedy sometimes. Um, I don't know why it's called a kitchen lounge. We call it the W, but whatever. Uh, but anyways, I have this picture here so you can see uh, 
there's obviously still really old brick here. And once again, I apologize for showing all the pictures this way. If people like this video, I'll uh, definitely make, uh, I'll do this better and do a whole slideshow and stuff. But I was trying to rush to get this done. And I was just, uh, you know, struggling with technology this morning. So I just uh, did these all in my messaging app because it just sent automatically as a slideshow. So I was like, whatever, this is easy. Anyways, <laughs> I digress. So old, old brick right out here on the kitchen lounge. And when you go inside, you can also see some of the old uh, brick being reused. Uh, this whole area, a lot of it, um, like you can see above here, it's plastered and the plastering over here, over the old, old brick. And this is a coffee shop in the area where the whole back wall, they decided to use the ancient brick here. And they have like a very nice ceiling in this place too. So it's almost like it really gives you the feeling of like being in this old, old place. But yeah, you can see like the brick is like coming apart. Looks amazing. video I took just to show like how close all these buildings are because it's like it's like this whole neighborhood was essentially untouched you know like it's like they walked into you know at any time period regardless of what time this happens it very much seems like they like a bunch of people walked into a city that just had a bunch of ancient buildings that weren't in ruins at all and were mostly usable. And they were like, hell yeah, let's divide the city and we'll just have all these buildings and we can make our fortunes off of them or continue to make fortunes. Cause you know, the people that were coming here in the first place were uh, generally already pretty wealthy, but also, yeah, here you can see like, this has like a little like, copper dome type of thing on top of it and um you see like the cross type of stuff right here and a lot of these buildings have like i don't even know what you would call that but these like indentations that kind of like make them look castle like this is more like i guess like of a cross but there's others of these buildings that um have that kind of castle-like finish on them. This is, I think, the Life Arts building um, that says, let me see, yeah, this is the Life Arts building. But yeah, you can tell this is old and just managed to, whatever hit the world did not hit this building and it just is going on and people are still living in it. This is, yeah, I don't know, this is the kind of building that you would expect to hear like, haunted stories about it just seems like so old and, and it doesn't seem at all you know like it should be in california it really is giving east coast is giving you know chicago because especially like you you don't see brick like that out here in california especially because i like, think i should uh, uh confirm this but you know california is one of the last states to be uh, made, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, this is interesting because I don't know if this is like coming apart. Looks like something shook it. I got a lot of cracks in here. But yes, to the glory and God and the uplifting of man, YMCA uh, at 1909. Um, yeah, so this is very interesting. Huh. Yeah, I don't know what that's supposed to mean, AD. Because um, I know what it means with, like, you know, time and stuff. But it would truly be amazing if... Uh... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, like, thinking. But anyways, this, uh, I think, is just uh, really cool because it shows... Uh, 
you know, something just happening to this building here, but also it just shows you how intact it is, even with whatever this is right here having happened. And this was supposedly uh, made in 1909. Here we have the sign, a life arts building in 1909. Uh, yeah, 1909. I don't know. That's not too long ago. Just because, like, my grandma's place in Chicago is built entirely out of brick, and so is, like, my uncle's place, which is, like, very, very like, that is such an old school house. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if it was ancient. But, um, that brick is nice. Like, I, you know, I've been coming back and forth seeing that house for, like, 20, almost 30 years now. And I wouldn't say the brick looks aged at all. So I would really wonder how much time it takes for brick to start weathering. And then, uh, you know, I've heard our bricks of today aren't necessarily as good as old bricks. So it's like, well, then if those old bricks were even better, well, how long did it take for those to truly weather? And this is the church whose name I should have looked up, but... Uh, I don't know what they were doing in the past, but now this church is uh, pro uh, Black Lives Matter, pro, um, uh, I can't read the rest, but they're uh, not racist and they're gay friendly. So I guess at least they've got that going on, a beautiful tower, this lights up rainbow at night, but uh, I think that's just for them, that's not to call in the queer, the queers and all the gays. Um, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to show that because that's very much the, um, you know, towering type of architecture that uh, lets you know that this is old, but also the building itself will tell you it's old. But yeah, the front of this building is like very, very nice too. Lots of old churches. My favorite old church is coming up right here. This one, oh my god, this old church, this one to me just kind of screams like, I don't know, like this is something else here. Like it's almost like the building is kind of speaking to me truly from another time. Uh, and yeah, it's got this like castle like kind of architecture over here. But also I love that it's like, it's just a single story it kind of shows you what, like, an important building of, like, a smaller size would be made out of. And I just, I don't know, I really like it. Something about this. And it's so different if you um, look at the other stuff. Like, if we just go right back here to the YMCA. Um, like, you know, like, look at this brick and, you know, the size of it in comparison to this church. These are much bigger bricks. You know, like, this is a totally different style this, you know, like, it really just um, stands out to you. Uh, and let's see, did I zoom in? Oh, wait, no. Oh, here we go. I placed that one out on the wrong part. But, um, yeah, we can see right here, uh, this was established in 1881. And, I mean, this kind of, like, stone, though, this could be any age. And, like, who was building like this? Who was building like this in 1881 with their horse and buggy, you know, and their, like, like their rope cranes? I don't know. I think this is a building to be looked at closer. It's just, like... Something about the architecture and the whole style just is screaming, like, medieval. Yeah, that is, like, that. this church is one of my favorite things that I've been walking past, just to see it looking like a small castle. <laughs> like, uh, you probably heard that. That is my cat. She is playing. Are you having fun? You having fun, Caduceus? Uh, so, yeah, so, yeah, this building, I have to look more into it, but, yeah, it says 1881, and, yeah, we just had the basics, I don't know, let me see if I can look it up, what technology do we have, 
what technology was oh yeah let's see let's see things that were invented in 1881 the metal detector okay i guess we've got a little bit of technology we've got the cash register i've seen an old cash register though so i don't know saying we have the metal detector in 1881 and then the cash register given the old cash registers i've seen it kind of seems like the metal detector is far above but i mean i don't know everything Machine gun. Oh, shit. We were fucking with machine guns in 1884. Steam turbine. Steam turbine. I mean, I guess with the steam turbine, you could make machinery at the point where um, you could lift uh, stuff like this. But it does also, like, it kind of makes you think, okay, well, we had steam turbines and, you know, steam engines and all that stuff. Then why didn't why aren't there pictures of, you know, these steam powered uh, cranes and whatnot moving these materials into place, you know? Or even a picture of, you know, a 20 person horse and carriage hauling some bricks. You know, because we ask how the pyramids were built, but do we ask how the stuff in our own backyard was? But yeah, so this is essentially the technology of the time where we, 1881, so we've got the light bulb, phonograph, moving pictures, telephone, four-stroke engine, carpet sweeper, tram, barbed wire, traffic lights, air brake, typewriter, torpedo, dynamite, Yale lock, underground train, plastic, bicycle, internal combustion engine, pasteurization, glider, safety lift, gyroscope, and an airship. Yeah, honestly, things seem like they were popping. <laughs> like, it seems like there is far enough technology. Uh, but uh, given some of the stuff in here, you know, it's not necessarily the picture that people paint all the time, even though often, you know, these things are literally right here to be looked at. You know, we get a very different sense of what the world was. I digress, though. But, yes, back to my favorite castle church. Established the Unitarian Universalist Church, 1881. Now also non-racist and gay-friendly. And honestly, they probably were in the past, too. So this is... Um, Another church I should have found the name of. Let's look real close. Um, let me see. I might be able to find the name of this church in a second. But this is also another one down the historic 395, uh, right down uh, by the Mission Inn. And I thought this church... Um, was interesting because uh, this one I found something kind of interesting too. So like this one, you look at it, you look at this and you're like, oh my God, wow, look at this like old stone, like all that, like, you know, like it looks nice, it looks old, right? But if we zoom a zoom in, We've got, of course, our classic columns giving Rome. Um, we've got our archways, of course. Um, but what you really, it's important here is to see like this, like, or hold on, <laughs> like these big blocks, right? We've got these big blocks and I'm not saying megalithic or anything, but you know, these, these look a certain way and they are a certain size, okay? So now let's look over here in the picture, like right on this stuff. This seems more smooth, like, you know, it just makes me, like, it made me wonder, like, why are these stones different? So I looked into it a little bit, just a tad, and, um, oh no, do I not have the picture? Oh, no, I might not have put that picture on here, but hold on. 
I can, uh, but that's what I was saying. Like, here's a better picture of it. You see these large stones. This looks original. You know, like, this looks like they built it like that. You know, this says, this memorial built by the citizens of Riverside. Uh, so that's how it looks. But when I looked much closer, hold on. I had like an up close picture of this that um, I don't think I have for this video. But basically, I took I took an up close picture, but I also looked in person of like this part as opposed to this stone working part in the middle. And this part up here, I was actually uh, if you look close, it looks like wood. Like, it just looks like wood. And I was like, why does a stone look just like wooden boards? And then I found a piece of it that was cracked off, and underneath the stone was wood. They had just put wood under this, uh, like, I don't know, it's like they tried to revive the building by putting like plating it in all of this wood coating and then plastered over the wood to make it look like stone like maybe because this looks like yeah i don't know like because they do have brick you see in this um the stairs are brick but maybe this brick was added later and this like these bigger stones these bigger gray stones are the original because it could make sense that if they did this plastering on top of this wood, like, per, like if I was personally, I would do that if I was trying to, you know, revive this building. But I was like, look, I don't know how they moved those stones. I don't know how they did all that stuff, but I'm telling you that if we want to like make it look nice again, we can just throw some wood up and plaster over it. That's what I would do, <laughs> because, it, you know, it clearly looks like they could not uh, do stonework the same that these people could who were the original owners of the building. And hold on, I'm just looking in my phone for a quick second to see if I can pull this picture up for you, because I did not put it in my little uh, not sled show we have going on here. Oh, here we go. I actually have it. Okay. <laughs> I <clears throat> oh, yeah, I found the picture. I'd actually uploaded it on here, but out of order. So this is the picture that I was talking about on those layers of the church uh, where you can't as obviously see the same type of bricks as that more front-facing part. This is what was under the stone. You can obviously see that it didn't just look like wood. They had, in fact, put, like, some cheap plaster cement, or I guess it's not plaster, it's more cement. They put, like, some cement over this, like, wood, which, like, okay. But what I found interesting about that was that this is also... Um, Uh, hold on a second. This was also done a lot at the Mission Inn Church. So most of this walk, I actually went on to look at the Mission Inn, but I found a lot of other interesting things. And um, so all of this was down the block by the Mission Inn. And I meant to get more pictures of the actual Mission Inn, but uh, this is not the mention, mission and this is the church next to it. But yeah, you see this right here, how it looks just smooth and stuff. But if you go closer, you can see it kind of looks like wood. And then if we go all the way to the end of my stuff, you can see there is, in fact, wood under there. So I would love to know why there's wood. I couldn't find anything in the history of the building the place. But like I said, I think they were trying to make it look nice again, threw some wood on top of it to, you know, hold everything in place and make it look nice, and then just threw some cement on top of it to look like they also built from stone or whatever. So, oh, yeah, I'm going to get to those faces in a second. Very interesting stuff. So this was on the outside of that of this church. 
And this is very, very interesting because this seems to be um, representation of the snake and the eagle, which would be very interesting because the snake and the eagle is the story of, I think, the Mayans in Mexico or of finding Mexico. Um, of, like, being told by, I think, you know, maybe God that, you know, don't stop until you see an eagle eating a snake. And so this symbology, while not the exact um, snake and eagle of the Mexican flag, does seem interesting. Especially because from there, the story of the Mayas is that the Mayas then started, you know, going through um, traveling North America, trying to find like a new land. And the, these two brothers, Choctaw and Chicksaw, were traveling through the lands, trying to find new places. And then Choctaw stopped one place, Chicksaw, Chicksaw kept going to the next place, and then they established those tribes in the Americas, which ended up being, I think, in the Mississippi area. So this is interesting because the Mexican flag, they have the snake in their mouths, but this does look like it could be some type of representation. Now we've got this stuff over here. Oh, yeah, so the Mission Inn. Uh, I'm an idiot for not taking more pictures of the Mission Inn, so let's just go ahead and search it right now. So I do have a little bit of history on the Mission Inn. Uh, so, oh, here's a little old picture. Yeah, these pictures I can't find. I need to go try and find these myself. So this is a nice old picture here. Oh, wow, this bell actually it seems to have, what, this is like Chinese or, excuse me, I don't really know this, but I can tell it is Asian characters of some sort. And actually, this part of Riverside, it actually might be Chinese because right down the street is like a little, I think, Chinese memorial type of thing because China gave money to the city of Riverside to help establish itself and in uh to thank them, we built like a little thing for them. So interesting here to see this old bell with these characters on it, which is a, apparently a part of the original. And let's zoom in a bit because this looks like it's supposed to be like original, original, right? So this is clearly a, you know, oh, and it's broken here. Huh. Yeah, so this looks like an old sidewalk he's on, right? This looks pretty old and well built. So we can tell just from looking, this bell is metal. His clothes are uh, fabric. This piece, this plant is sitting on top of this clearly wood. And this is stone. And this back here, which is a part of the building, is stone, and I assume he is standing in front of the original Mission Inn. I say all that because the story of the original Mission Inn is that it was originally a 12-room adobe house, and I have nothing against adobe. Uh, I think um, adobe and working with earth is amazing, and in fact, there are so many amazing structures that you can build from adobe and super adobe and all types of earth that they can be rock hard and um you know just as legitimate of a space as any of the best architecture in the world but but it don't look like adobe to me <laughs> Uh, you know, I, any of it, it sure could be adobe but I don't think this doesn't look like adobe to me and it also doesn't look like even if they are working with earth, it doesn't look like they're just slapping mud together and building buildings, you know, like that. It takes a, a lot to work even just with earth. Like you still have to, um, what do you call it? Uh, make sure, like sometimes you have to add cement and stuff, make sure it's structurally sound, all this stuff. So let's just look a little bit into the history. 
The story of the Mission Inn stretches over more than a century and began with the Miller family, migrants to California from Tomaha, Wisconsin. And in 1874, the civil engineer C.C. Miller arrived in Riverside, began work on a water system, and with his family began a small boarding house in the center of town. In 1880, his son Frank Augustus Miller bought the property and gradually improved and enlarged it. Okay, so... 1874. So we know the city of Riverside was established in 1870. So only four years into the history of Riverside, California, this guy moves in and builds a 12-room boarding house because apparently in four years of existing, Riverside was popping and we needed a place to store all these people who were coming to visit in the four years. <laughs> that it had existed. So in four years of existing, we bring over a civil engineer to work on a water system. Huh. In 1874, we're working on the water system. And I mean, if we go back to like our technology, like what do we have? Where is that page? Did I close it out? Oh no, I lost my page. But uh, if we were to go back to that page of like what existed back in 1870, we would see that eh, they did have some technology, but for some reason in all of the accounts talking to us about construction and all this other stuff, they don't really act like any of this technology was in use for anything other than, I don't know, just rich people making rich people toys. Okay, right, so, hold on, where am I? Uh, oh, yes, of course. So, because I didn't take any pictures, I wanted to show you some pictures of the Mission Inn. So, this is the Mission Inn, started as a 12-room adobe boarding house. Oh, okay, I'll show you the little opening that we have on this website. I've got the rain cross there. Beautiful, beautiful building. But yeah, you see, like, this is a palace. Like, this place is amazing. Like, an absolute palace. Right? Yeah, I love this little video. I'll see if I can find some more just pictures. But this is a nice tour. Lovely, lovely. Yeah, you know what they're not going to show you in this video is something that I took pictures of that is so interesting and really makes a case for this being ancient, not just old. But yeah, you can see this is a beautiful place and it's massive. It takes up an entire city block right? and was supposedly founded in um, 1870 or no. 1870 was the founding of Riverside. 1874 is when we established our 12 room adobe boarding house. And adobe can mean uh, just working just with the earth and like in creative ways and building a structure out of that. And it can also mean adobe brick. So, but when I look at the bricks, I don't like is there might be some dirt mixed into these, but like these are some great bricks. Like, look at how beautiful this place is. And like I said, where you see just this gray, like like that, just they literally they've plastered over wood, which also is like, well, why are you plastering over wood if it was originally made out of adobe? I don't know. Some of the stuff, like the construction here, seems strange. And you know what? It might be. There might be a little conspiracy there. But anyway, so that's a little bit of the mission in for you to see what I'm talking about. Um, let's see some other beautiful pictures of the mission in. Yeah, this is like classic. I think I took a picture of this, but it didn't make it to my little slideshow. This looks ancient to me because this to me looks like when I was in Miami, the sign thing for Coral Gables. 
and also it just gives you this very like worldwide like kind of culture thing like let me see if i can find the sign for coral gables yeah gables uh in just... ah yes yeah i guess the one out here is a little a uh, bit bigger but uh yeah, like this, you can tell this is so old, this Coral Gable sign. There's also another one that I used to enter on when we lived out there for a bit. But I won't waste your time trying to find it right now. But yeah, so we've got the beautiful Mission Inn, right? Beautiful, beautiful historic hotel. This gives you a better idea of it better than I do. In fact, these churches might like low-key even be a part of the Mission Inn. But back to where we were. And so, looking at the Mission Inn, I was walking around the outside of it. I haven't gotten a chance to go inside quite yet. But I noticed some interesting things. And this is where, you know, we can all work together. And please help me find out more about this because, or, and help me figure out how to search about it. Because, uh, me and my partner plan on going to the library and seeing if they have anything about this stuff. But um, found some interesting stuff. This is out in the original brick outside the Mission Inn. Because there's a lot of the plastering that you see and a lot of this new stuff. But then there is a lot of just old uh, original classic brick as well. I was going to try and find a picture of it here. But uh, yeah, it's not as featured, but yeah, here's another amazing picture of the Mission Inn Hotel in Riverside. But anyways, I can't find a picture here, but a lot of the original brick is out there. And this original brick looks ancient. And in that original brick, I started to find some faces that look so old and they also don't look Spanish or they don't look necessarily or <laughs> tripping over my words. They don't look Spanish and or do not look like what we today think of as the Spanish ethnic group. So here's the first one. You can see this guy kind of looks like he has a little fro and a flat nose, right? I won't give any, you know, like, it's looking a negroid to me, but, you know, can't make any assumptions. Tons of people have curly hair. But this is very interesting. And then also, if you note uh, right now, just the, um, the quality and the condition that the brick here is in with this face that very much looks original. And you cannot find any information about these faces. I tried to look up what they were. It, it's either terribly difficult to look up or they really, really kept it out of the history. Like there's nothing on the official um, histories or on the websites about these faces in the bricks. Here's another one. This one looks stylized. And again, note the condition of the brick, the very old brick. Uh, this one, <laughs> this one is funny because um, this one, again, you can tell uh, very flat nose. We've got thick lips. But with the flat nose and thick lips, somehow this guy kind of looks like almost like a black version of the Monopoly man to me. <laughs> But yeah, this is very interesting, and this style um, of face reminds me of things that I've seen that are claimed to be much more ancient. And then we've got this face as well. Yeah, also very interesting. Um, again, we've got very thick lips, we've got um, a large nose. And uh, in one of these, and actually in most of these, you can't tell as much from the picture, but it was actually giving like, a, like this one, like the first one is very much like 
you can tell uh, more when you're in person, but somebody purposely chipped this nose off, like, you know, very much like the, you know, all the other stuff that has been defaced and noses have been taken off of and like Egypt and stuff. And so this is, it, it, like, it's so interesting that like the noses were taken off, but in other ones, you can kind of start to get a picture of what these faces were and who these people look like. And again, we can see that this hair used to be like a very short, uh, curly cut close to the face, thick lips. Now this one, wow, this one, yeah. Again, like they knocked that nose right off, didn't they? Knocked them nose right off. And we've got their thick lips here. We've got, um, you know, some hair that kind of looks like in person, like it could be braids or locks, which is very, very interesting. This one also, um, it almost looks like it's of a different time period or of a different people. Like this one looks very Mayan to me and the other ones don't, like they could also be Mayan or something, but this particular face really like speaks to stuff that has been confirmed as uh, Mayan and ancient North American cultures. We've got this face. This face seems way more put together. This one kind of looks like it could be Spanish, like the Spanish threw it in there at the end or something. But then again, who knows, maybe it, um, this one was just kept in really good condition for whatever reason. But let's see if we can pair. Comparing, looking at them. Yeah, just looking at them, this one looks very new. It does kind of look like it was just placed there, whereas this one has been through it. And then we have this face as well. Yeah, this one is old, old. Yeah, you can, yeah, in comparison to those other ones. Yeah, what, like, yeah, in comparison to the one that I just showed that looked more Spanish. Yeah, these, yeah, you can tell this is totally different. These are like totally different time periods. Like this is ancient. And this again looks like some type of like updo. We've got our hair pulled up on top of our head maybe. We've got a flat nose. We don't have as big as protruding lips here. And looks like it was messed up over here in the eye area. And here we have this plaque. Um, oh shit. Uh, yeah, I don't know what this is supposed to mean or what it says, but very interesting. I'm not sure what this animal was supposed to be. Possibly a phoenix? I don't know. Possibly original? So, <clears throat> as I was saying earlier, to like pay attention to the quality of the brick and just the style and how it looks like in these old pictures of the mission and that was uh, supposedly begun in, I think they said 1874, right? We see this brick. Uh, so what I have up here somewhere is pictures of other brick ruins from around the world that are thousands of years old. So right here we have uh, our Yut uh, Yathaya Historical Park in Thailand, which is thousands of years old. This was founded in um, 1350 BC. I had looked it up somewhere over here, I think. Uh, I lost the link, but yes, this uh, ancient place was founded in 1350, and just look at how the bricks look today. 1350, and it, like, you know, like, it's still so intact, like, so much of this. 
or hold on, I don't think this picture is from the same place. Let me go back. But yeah, specifically like this, uh, this is an old Asian brick wall from Ayutthaya Historical Park in Thailand. But yeah, if we just pay attention to even just this picture, I had had more pictures of it. But like, this is very much still put together for something that is from 1350. Hold on, I had had, uh... ah, here we go. Yeah, it had this pulled up. Yeah, founded in 1350. Ayutthaya became um, the second capital of the Siamese kingdom. And I guess it possibly had people um, restoring it up until the 18th century. The Burmese army came and took it over in about 1767. Hmm. Yeah, this is a whole archaeological site. And as we can see, how well it is still put together. And yeah, this is very much giving antiquitech, if I do say so myself. Because uh, if anything, if we just go on a basis of like um, te technological knowledge that we know now, as long as like these antennas were, are like, you know, as long as this was an antenna that um, whatever this is made out of was um, flowing the electricity like um, through the ground, like if it's coming, <laughs> sorry, what am I trying to say? I'm not super uh, knowledgeable on this stuff, but I do know about atmospheric antennas. And there's this great guy, uh, Yannick Von Dorn on here. Uh, who does a lot of, he's a scientist and does a lot of great stuff with atmospheric antennas and growing plants and stuff. So even if these were just atmospheric antennas um, and did nothing else besides that, they would have like a really amazing effect on both um, the natural environment and possibly anybody who is, you know, in contact with the ground whose earth is now charged by this antenna. So we've got some more historic pictures of Ayataya. Sorry, I know I'm not saying that right, doing my best. And I'm just showing these pictures to show you that brick, oh wow, this is amazing. That is gorgeous. What? Is, wow. That is an amazing picture right there. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, but truly amazing. But I guess here we can see the brick in the background. Still in pretty good shape. That's pretty good shape. You know, so who's to say if Ayatthaya looks like this from 1350 and all this stuff is clearly still buildings that are so well put together that they're not only standing, but you can safely enter them and walk up, you know, to second and third floors and stuff. Then who is to say that this is any younger? But this was supposedly started as a 12 room adobe boarding house which again adobe can do some beautiful things but it does um make me question why they say just adobe and not like adobe brick because if you said adobe brick well okay then i can be like oh well i guess they would had some real special way to make these bricks really well out of adobe um, and once again, adobe bricks can be good, like absolutely use the earth to build the earth. That's what it's there for. The earth um, is one of the best things to build with. It'll be natural air conditioning and heating, like it's beautiful. But um, from what your common person knows about 
adobe like i wouldn't think that these adobe bricks were lasting that long unless they put something in them again i don't know but all i know is that this right here looks just as ancient as ariat haya wait where'd it go again <laughs> there you go. but yeah these look like the same bricks and damn near the same um, like level of put together still. But yeah, these faces, I think really, really give this away as truly ancient. Ah yes, yeah, so we've got this right here. I don't know what the symbol is, but I know this is a very uh, common symbol in like mythical animals. So feel free to tell me what that is. I think it's, um, you know, and I'm not even gonna guess. <laughs> I forget what it's called. Um, but yeah, here we go. Another very ancient face. This seems to be made out of like a totally different type of stone, very porous. And, um, and this is very um, stylistic as we can see from some of the other faces, like this is like very stylistic. Like, it's just like, you know, it's like, it's purposely made to look like this. Whereas like this, you know, this is not the same artist. That's not the same artist. But yeah, beautiful. And you know, my girlfriend while uh, tripping, she said, uh, cause we've had like some intense um psychedelic experiences and i have a book actually coming out um soon hopefully uh about all of our experiences and all of like just even my personal journey with this stuff and uh, doing these spiritual things and to cut to the chase uh to cut to the chase sorry tripping over my words uh uh, upon like doing like some, you know, spiritual work and being on like some very high grade LSD, we uh, were hanging out and out of nowhere, a face that looked just like this appeared to her on one of our crystals. And it seemed to just be like poking into this dimension, uh, trying to see what we were up to. And she got spooked and tossed the Uh, but yeah, so that is a phenomenon that can happen in deep psychedelic experiences, and I can't wait to have uh, some more. This next picture is the last face that I have, but again, we can see both the lips and the nose were defaced to obscure the ethnicity of these people in the original uh, artwork and owners of the buildings. This hairstyle is uh, a <laughs> very classic. Uh, and then here we have just the very end of my pictures. This is the last one that I showed you earlier, how they had obviously um, layered the cement over wood. And then this is also a picture that I was looking for where you can very much see the grain of the wood in this uh, plaster that they put over. And here's a little bit of wood sticking out up here. But Okay, and to end the video, I just wanted to share something interesting that I read about the mission in, if I can find it here in this thing. Here we go. So I'll just read it and then I will comment on it. So following his death in 1935, this is about the mission in hotel. Uh, following his death in 1935, Miller's family continued operating the inn for the next two decades until 1956, when it was sold to San Francisco hotel men Benjamin Swig. In an attempt to revitalize the falling inn, which was losing business to growing tourist hotspots like nearby Palm Springs, Swig told nearly 1,000 artwork. Uh, Swig sold nearly one thousand artworks and artifacts from the hotel's collection and redecorated the inn in the latest mid-century styles. 
This effort did little to restore the inn's popularity, and the hotel struggled through multiple owners and unending financial crises. Uh, it was even transformed from a hotel into dorm rooms and private apartments. Fearful that the hotel would permanently shutter and its interior collections destroyed, in 1969, a group of concerned citizens formed the Friends of the Mission Inn, a, ho a volunteer organization dedicated to prompting, uh, promoting hotel business and safeguarding the historic collections. Okay, so... I think this is super interesting and strange. Like, I guess it can make sense if, like, you need money and you're trying to get your hotel to, I don't know, you need money for your hotel or money for anything and you own this amazing place. Sure, I guess sell some of the art. But, I mean, when you're saying that it was changed to this mid-century style from something else and you sold thousands like there was literally thousands of artworks and artifacts artifact is a very particular word which makes me think you know like literally ancient artifacts but when that is what you're talking about and then like you if you're saying it was changed to this mid-century style like that and but on the outside of what is very clearly some of like the original brick, we have these faces like that. So that makes me think that the artifacts that were to be found, these thousands of artifacts and artworks were more in this kind of style. Like it makes me think that if we had more of these artifacts, we would have uh, maybe entirely different history of this place. It just eh, doesn't seem very, <laughs> you know, American East or like, you know, it, it, it doesn't seem to me like a man from Wisconsin carved this into his Adobe boarding home. <laughs> but you let me know what you think and any information that you may have on this interesting bit of history in Riverside, California, the historic 395. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'm going to head out. And uh, shout out to Looms AI for doing all of this for me. So if you see this in my video and you're like, oh, this doesn't even talk about all the conspiracy and all that. That's because I just let the AI do it for me. Very lazy, ADHD, just putting the video out. I'll make a thumbnail, but you know what? It might not be that good, <laughs> but we're just having fun here. Have a great day. Peace.